Beautiful. You know how these fit. So, with that said, we're gonna go out to the garage. We're gonna make this one piece. We're gonna start sanding it. It's pretty rough. I think I'm gonna hit it with a 40 grit and then uh, maybe an 80, but I'm going to end up, I'll end up filling this gap here and then I'm going to end up hitting this with uh, a high build automotive primer. I'm gonna let that cure because it's gonna bite good to this. And then we'll end up wet sanding that right down to about an 800 and then we're gonna start the mold process. I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna do the mold yet. I think I am gonna split it on this line right here and then I'm gonna put them together using body panel adhesive, which should be stronger than the epoxy that Kate used. It's good to about 6,000 PSI. I put body panels on with it, and that car later got into a collision and then the panel was still on there. So it should be good, life's good. Let's, uh, let's go knock this one out of the park and deliver it to Don. I think he's gonna be pumped. And if you don't follow Don's life channel, you should because he recently got a CH Corvette that he's been driving around and it looks pretty awesome. Okay guys, so what I'm doing is I'm spraying this in a high belt primer. I have no intention of this actually making it smooth, although it will get out some of the imperfections. The main reason I'm doing this is because of the plastic that the scoop is made from or 3D printed from. The gel coat I wanna put on there won't bond to it, but it will bond to the primer and the primer will bond to the plastic. So the idea here is to put the high build primer on it, block it out to get it relatively straight and smooth, put the gel coat on and that's what will fill most of the imperfections and we will get it glossy and smooth and then we will move on to the tooling gel coat and from there the rest of the mold okay so we've got the gel coat all on here it's nice and cured we did use the wax that you saw me pour in there now from here we're going to hit this a few times we're going to hit it with a probably a 180 grit and then a 240 probably the 320 probably go over it with a 400 after that then a six and an eight and a thousand then a 1200 then we're going to polish it it's nice and smooth Okay, so that's it, that's pretty good. So the next battle is, I was trying to think of the best way to tackle this. And originally I was kind of thinking, do I cut it with a Dremel along this body line? Similar to the pictures of like what Cade did here, but I'm gonna go against that. And I think I'm gonna build the two piece mold right on here. So I think we're gonna run a piece of puck board all across this line here. It'll be a good separation line. And then I think we'll come down this transition here, maybe here, I'm not sure and then across here, because I want to mold this whole top piece as one. We're going to hot glue gun, or hot melt glue as some people call it, uh, some puck board across here. This is the hardest part for me. This is where I struggle the most, is making the mold. So the other thing to keep in mind is when we're laying the carbon afterward, how many transitions do we have? So we come across here, that's not too bad, but we have this other transition here, and we don't want too many uneven lines, but then we're going to have two transitions right here in this corner. So some of the material you'll end up seeing me use is just some cheap puck board. It's super cheap, like I think a yard of it or a square meter works out to like $12 or something. So we're gonna use about 50 cents worth of that on here. I may have to heat it up with a hairdryer in certain spots to mold and manipulate it, but we'll definitely run a piece across here. Okay guys, it's been a quick 12 hours. Things are kind of tacky. I'm not overly concerned about this. This all looks good. This is kind of the risk you run into when you're making molds is, you know, shit can go sideways fast. So this all looks really good. I know you guys are probably like, oh my God, it's streaky, but underneath it won't be streaky. My concern, however, is my mold where my tape was adjusted here. And now we kind of have this underlying cut here. This underlying cut that's somewhat hard to see. So I'm hoping that once we put the fiberglass on and we pull it apart, we can repair that. Unfortunately, we won't know until the entire mold is done. And keep in mind, we're only halfway through right now. We have the entire other side to do yet. We probably have another four to five hours of work before we even know if we can repair that. And this might all be scrapped. So we're gonna keep cruising along and see what that brings. Next up, we're gonna be putting down our resin and we're gonna be painting it on with a brush and we will be laying three different styles of mat. We'll do a really light six gram mat. 
to kind of help with the contour a little bit. First, we're gonna use a six gram cloth and a 10 gram cloth. Helps add a little bit of flexibility when we're working with things, but then we want the rigidity as well, especially on the vacuum side of things. So we're going to be using a fiberglass cloth or fiberglass mat after. It'll really add that rigidity we need. All right, guys, we are in uncharted waters here. I have never had anything like this happen before. You can see how it's all white. It got extremely hot. I mean, it's hard. I put it outside where it was minus 25 Celsius to try and cool it. I put snow on it. You can still see it's actually wet. My concern, my big, big concern is, is the plug okay? And we're not gonna know really until we take it all apart. So it did pull apart good guys. Uh, it was a good release. So that's good. However, bad news. If you look inside, you can see that it is in fact, does have a warp to it. Do we carry on with the mold? I don't know. Like I'm already skeptical because of how it kind of overlaps here. I could clean that up really fast though. It wouldn't take long. I'm gonna go to bed and uh, I'll make a decision tomorrow, I guess. All right guys, next morning I got up early. I knocked this thing out and uh, it's actually not as bad as I thought. So I'm kind of regretting baking it out. Although we might be able to get it back in. It might go back in there. We'll see. Oh yeah, there it goes. I'm gonna fill the gaps with some wax and uh, go from there. Not impressed, but I'm surprised it's better than I expected. So that's good. I took this mixing stick here and you can see the gap in there, right? You see that half inch gap, three quarters of an inch there, right? See that gap? Interesting enough, when you do the same thing on here, there is zero gap, zero. So that's cool. So what happened was this turned into essentially an oven, I guess. This cured and pulled away from this, and then it got so hot it actually warped this, which is kind of why we're going away from these. Now, interesting enough, I put my thermal gun on here when it was getting hot, and it was 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, pretty hot. Truth here. Let's see what kind of release we have. Oh, my smokes, it's tight. Maybe I should have used more wax. A moment of truth. Now, can we get this out of here? Now I bet I know what you're thinking. Oh, finally we can lay some carbon. No, no, we have probably in the neighborhood of 10 hours and prep work and cleanup to do before we even think about laying carbon. Okay, so if you guys are wondering what I'm doing here, uh, I'm essentially, I'm signing this right now in a 40 grit. It's a little aggressive, but it is pretty rough. Um, doesn't matter if it burns through the primer because the exterior part, we just need the gum tape line to be smooth. So we're gonna go around and sand this. We'll end up sanding in here too with more of a, I'll be hit it with a 220 or 320 and we'll end up polishing this. So another problem. So if you look right there, we've got a pretty good hair gap there that we tried to avoid. We don't have a lot of gel coat there. It's pretty thin. You can actually see through it. And right there. So rather than mix up gel coat, I might just put some epoxy on there because it does sand and polish nicely. Okay. 
about six hours we're gonna take this thing apart it won't be fully cured yet this epoxy is a 36 hour fully fully cure but it's a 12 hour sandable so it should be uh, relatively hard all right let's see what kind of release we get here I'm actually curious as to how the product turned out because I had it sitting leaning up against the garbage can and at some point it fell over and it was upside down like this. So I had it sitting like this and it fell over. That doesn't look too bad. Probably looks rough to you guys because it's got all the PVA on it. I'm gonna clean this up and I'll come back and show you guys. Okay guys, I've got the infusion happening over there on the upper half of the roof scoop. Clean the PVA off there, this is what it kind of looks like. We'll end up having to sand this down and uh, I'll put another layer of uh, gel coat on it just to make it a little stiffer. It, I mean, it is, it is very, very stiff and rigid, but when you think this thing's flying on the highway, you know, with all that air ramming in there, things uh, don't always go as planned. We're gonna come back in 12 hours once that's all done. The infusion will be done in about an hour, but then we need to wait 12 hours minimum. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I usually struggle so much with a bag assembly. I always end up with a hole somewhere or I can't get a full 30 inches of vacuum. Guess what? That bag worked perfect. That is the best bag I have ever put on a carbon fiber piece. Amped about it. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Guys, 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 it's a new beautiful day. It is early, I'm trying to be quiet. It's 4.30 in the morning, my family's sleeping. I just, I couldn't contain myself. I'm so excited for this bag on this thing and how well it actually turned out. So look at these clam sauce here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh man. All right, let's get this apart here. I'll take the tape off after you guys don't want to see that. All right, let's see what we got here. Beautiful. Look at that PVA off there so you guys can actually see. So it looks shiny, you can see that's with PVA, that's without PVA. You can see the differences there. So we'll get it cleaned off, go on there somehow. I'm not sure how we're doing that yet. We'll get there. It's gonna be good. We'll be back. We're gonna let this cure, but while this is curing, I think we're gonna try and make a fiberglass one. You know, a lot of people wanna wrap their stuff or maybe paint it, you know, maybe you wanna do it whatever color your car is or whatever. Um, so I think we're going to do, we'll use the same molds and I think we're going to do a fiberglass one and then we'll finish it primer. If people want to wrap it or paint it or whatever they want, they don't have to pay the big money for carpet fiber. You could do fiberglass relatively cheap. So that said, let's get cooking. Let's uh, see if we can pump out a fiberglass one here. I've never done that. I'm new to it. So uh, if you see something you don't like, drop a comment. It's just go easy on me.
came out pretty good. I have to bond this together still, but uh, you can see it's it's pretty good. It's quite a bit heavier than the carbon fiber one, like significantly. But uh, you know, the cool thing is for me, assembling this where the seam is, I don't have to be super careful. I'm actually probably gonna just wrap it in some mat around here or cloth and uh, sand it to finish it. I might bond it too. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. But overall, really easy. Um, as you can see, you know, it's got a nice finish on it. And uh, yeah, we'll get this finished up here. Got the fiberglass together. I put it together with some fiberglass epoxy, and from there I used uh, some fiberglass to put the two pieces together. And from there, now we're going to lay down some black gel coat. The gel coat will not only add, add a little bit of structural integrity, but it'll also make this thing pretty much bulletproof for whoever's taking it, and then they don't have to worry about it. We got the gel coat on here now. We're going to let this sit for the night. Come back tomorrow. Hit it with probably 120 grit, maybe an 80 grit. If it's nice and flat, we'll work way up to about 1,000 or 1,200 grit while that polishing is thing. It'll be nice and smooth. All right, guys, so that kind of concludes it. Let's go through what we did. We took a 3D printed roof scoop that I designed with my friend Kevin, and we turned it into carbon fiber like this. So one thing to point out, I did change the mounting on it. So Originally, this would two-sided tape on, and now it's all one molded piece and uses your OE clips. The reason I went away from this design was I sold one to a guy named Scott, and I don't remember where Scott lived somewhere hot, and it actually melted on him, which is crazy, because I thought to myself, how hot can you get somewhere? I'm in Canada, so I mean, it gets 30 Celsius. Then I started thinking, what about in Texas? Florida. So just for fun, I put one of these in the oven at 55 degrees Celsius, which is like, to me, very hot. And it was fine. It's made of, it's printed of ABS plastic. I got an email from Scott, not right away, but shortly after, and it had melted on him. That said, I originally started doing the carbon fiber ones. This one is the carbon fiber 2x2 two two twill, instead of the plain. So you can see it's got a much nicer print to it. Scott, you don't know yet, buddy. I'm gonna send you this one. This will not melt on you, and it's fiberglass. These are functional, by the way. There is a hole in the bottom of them. So you can punch a hole into your engine bay and actually have a functional roof scoop. So that's it. That said, if you haven't watched the video and you are here specifically for the C8 Corvette roof scoop, I encourage you to check the link in the bio. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.